Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church as we continue our study and uh, the study of the Beatitudes over in, in Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to be on verse 7 today. We're talking about blessed are the merciful. And then we're talking about the poor in, sport, uh, poor in spirit. And then we talk about those that mourn. And so we're down now we're talking about blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. So we see this a little more of a shift as we go through these uh, different Beatitudes. But always keep in mind that blessed are the, the happy. That's the key to each one of these. It's happy are they that whatever one we're talking about here, we're talking about the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. And so this a little bit of a, a definition here is to have a uh, forgiving spirit and a compassionate heart. It's a deliberate effort to understand a person and meet the need. And the idea, sometimes people do things that are wrong. And you know, it's hard to believe maybe that uh, people make mistakes and sometimes say something they shouldn't say or they, they do something and without thinking and then they stop and think about what they did and, and uh, you know, they're horrified by what they've done. Or, and uh, there are those that, uh, a lot of times as Christians, we want to, you know, kind of kick one another under the bus if we don't, if we're not careful. And we need to uh, maybe be more compassionate, and that's what they talk about here. Is this the merciful is having that forgiving spirit? Okay, being compassionate, understanding, you know, kind of getting a, a feel for how that person feels about what they're going through, and and um, trying to to empathize with them, trying to really, you know, just get in there and really feel what they're feeling, and it's. Uh, this, this is a kind of a, one of those gifts that we look at, you know, the, we, we all can, all Christians are called to do this. I mean, it's not something that this is just for a certain group of Christians. Uh, none of these are for a certain group of Christians. We're all called to be uh, recognize this in ourselves and, and respond in these uh, different ways as, as we're talking about uh, mercy here. So the idea that getting in and understanding that, you know what, uh, sometimes it, we might be in that position. Uh, we might need somebody to show compassion, show, have a forgiving spirit to us, and, and that's what we're talking about. Um, if you want to be, if you want to be shown mercy, then we need to show mercy. If I want to receive mercy, then I need to, to show and display that. We uh, have some verses here we're looking at today, and I'm over in James chapter 2, and uh, verse 13, and uh, James writes, he says, uh, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that showeth no mercy. In other words, what God is saying here is to James is the fact that if you don't show mercy, then don't expect mercy. Okay. If you don't have that forgiving spirit, uh, you know, we come to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness all the time for things, you know, that he talks about over in uh, Hebrews. So sins that so easily beset us in Hebrews 12. And so the idea is that we want to uh, be have that merciful attitude. He says, if you're not going to show mercy, uh, then you're not going to have mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. So we we see the opposite side of the coin, so I'm not really sure that we have that compassionate heart. And I just I maybe stick with this a little bit because uh, in, in the walk of a Christian, listen, we, you know, the world out there don't like Christians to start with. I mean, we're living in an environment today where it's uh, less and less uh, appealing to be a Christian for the, as the world looks at us. We're getting more and more uh, persecution, and we'll talk about that a little bit in another one. But uh, the idea is that when we do something wrong, and I, I hear a lot of times I get different emails and different con, uh, communications where something happens within a church and somebody does something wrong and somebody gets caught up in, in something wrong. And, and we, a, lot, a lot of times, we, you know, we just want to maybe get away from them. Or we want to kind of separate from them. We don't want to be identified with them. Well, we need to understand that, uh, you know, we all do things wrong, like I said earlier. And, and so we need to have that compassionate spirit where we're going to, you know, help them where we can. And it's, it's not saying that we, are, if it's a sin and somebody's done something wrong and it's a sin that they've done that, it's not that we're, we're you know, condoning the sin or, or anything like that. It's helping the person through that time. You know, what we want to do is, as Christians, what the Bible tells us as we stay, especially in First Corinthians, or in, in the New Testament, is the idea that we always want to lift one another up. It's never the idea that we want to beat one another down. Uh, we need to have the attitude that the Lord does, don't we? I mean, what's his attitude toward the, the Christian that uh, does something wrong, that sins? He says, repent and come back to me. He says, come back to me. He always wants us to come back to him. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean he's going to take away the consequences. It doesn't mean he approves of sin. He says, you know what? Repent, turn from your sin and come back to me. And so as, if we're going to have that, that, that merciful attitude, that, that display of mercy, compassion in our life, then we need to uh, react more to things in a, a um, what I want to say, maybe more a calm manner. 
don't don't get all up in the air and excited right away, but stop and weigh out the situation and do what you can then to make it better, uh, not to add to it, okay? So uh, a merciful person does not have to be with it or see a person in need. Uh, he reaches out directly or in prayer, and so he does whatever is necessary to meet the needs. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes we're involved directly with something we hear we see someone that's done something wrong, and that's part of our maybe our family or part of our church family or whatever. So we can we can have some direct input, but and other times we hear about it uh, over in today's age, you know, over the internet, over the Facebook, and all those different things. And and so when we hear about it, we we take the time to pray for that person. We take the time to lift up that person and ask uh, God, you know, to help through that situation. He might uh, bring somebody into their life and somebody a contact that will will help them through to, to restore them. Again, always with the idea of restoring them and uh, and getting away with whatever the consequences are then to help them to deal with the consequences. All right? So we're going to see that. that we're going to reach out. We're going to do whatever we can. Uh, we, again, it gets back to God loves us, doesn't he? He forgives us and he helps us and to the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But So uh, with God working in our hearts, uh, he tells us in 1 John 3, 17, but whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So it kind of comes back to the, the commandments, doesn't it? We to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's what uh, for, as John's writing here in First John. If you have the world's good, and you see your brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God? How can you say, I'm a Christian and have the love of God when you don't show it. Uh, again, it's allowing your your faith to come out. James, uh, you know, James is that uh, book in the Bible and, and almost didn't make the canon because uh, they said that uh, some had the idea that James was preaching a con, a uh, way of salvation contrary to what Paul had been preaching. But James, he's, he's more of what I call the blue collar uh, writer. And he says here in James 2, uh, 15, 16, he says, you know what? He says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and if one of you say, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, not and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit you? And so he, what he's saying is you, you have the ability to help and you don't do it. You just uh, pay lip service. And a lot of times we do pay this lip service to something. And, and James is saying, you know what? Uh, get get your get your religion, get your Christianity, get your relationship with God out of your heart and display it. Put your heart out on your sleeve. So we talk about. It. So the idea is that uh, he's saying here they need it, and it's up to you then to meet that need. If you're going to display the love of God, okay, you're going to display a love for your fellow man, and we need to show the mercy. We need to show that compassionate spirit. Uh, and it doesn't mean that the person's done anything wrong. Sometimes they just have a need. And so we, we have the ability to, like he said right there, if a person, be, a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, they have a need. It's not that they've done anything wrong. Uh, sometimes hard times come into people. They lose jobs, sickness, disability, all these kind of things come into the picture. And you say, you see they have the need, so we need to, to reach out to them. Um, the, the merciful person, the person that's compassionate, he understands it's, it's more blessed to, to give than to receive. He says over in Acts, I have here Acts 20, 35, he says, I have I've showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, if I have the ability to, to be on one end or the other, I would rather be able to be on the side of giving to help someone rather than the one that needs help. But when we need help, we need to be able to receive that help and allow the other person to help us and to be compassionate and show that mercy. But as we talk about all these uh, different situations and I read the scripture, see, it applies to Christians, okay? Now, these are good things for the for the unsaved to do for one another. You want to meet needs and that. But when it comes to the walk of a Christian, we need to know, uh, let the world see what it's like to be a Christian. And how do we do that? We, we do that. First of all, I come to know Christ as my Savior. I establish a relationship with Jesus. And so I, what I do, I turn from the world. I repent. I turn from the world. I turn to God and put my faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he made it all possible when I talk about having the ability to be merciful and compassionate and these things. It's because I have the Holy Spirit within me. And I get the Holy Spirit when I come to know Christ as my Savior. So I let this be the day. Because not only does this deal with the daily life, but it, it deals with life eternal. 
where we just spend eternity. All right, so just today, if you're not saved, just repent, turn to God, and uh, recognize you're a sinner, and God has provided forgiveness for your sins. See the shed blood of Jesus. It's all by faith. Believe in what God says. If you trust in my son, you have everlasting life. If you reject my son, you have everlasting damnation. It's that simple. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day, and Lord, we just pray that as we walk this pathway of life as a Christian, that we would uh, be more uh, anxious, if you would, and more uh, willing to show compassion and, and forgiving, having a forgiving spirit uh, with those that have stumbled along the way that need to be forgiven, need to have help, Lord. We just thank you for loving us. We pray for those that don't know Christ. We pray that they would repent, turn, and put their faith in Jesus and have the most glorious gift they could ever receive. We thank you and praise you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.